Scott's Adventures. Lily's piloting the Tesla, and today we're going to have a really fun adventure. We're going to go to the grand opening of the Hilbert Museum. It's on the campus of Chapman University, and for a while they've been uh, reconstructing. The, uh, the museum's been in a temporary location for a year or so, and uh, they finally finished the new location. We are not sure what they did or what it looks like, but we're going to go check it out and uh, see the museum and you guys can come along with us. So come along, it should be fun. Right babe? When you approach the museum, the first thing that catches your eye is this giant mural along the front of the building. This 40 foot wide glass tile mosaic by artist Millard Sheets is called Pleasure Along the Beach. It was made in 1970 and once adorned the facade of the former Home Savings Bank in Santa Monica. Made of tens of thousands of Italian Murano glass tiles, the piece weighs almost 20 tons and was painstakingly restored in 2023 and 2024 by Brian Worley. Okay, so here we are at the Hilbert Museum. Boy, it's very different. They have a really nice courtyard. Let's go inside and uh, see what changes they made. Over the last 25 years, Mark and Janet Hilbert have built one of the most comprehensive collections of California scene paintings in the world. This collection with Chapman University and the public with the founding of the Hilbert Museum of California Art in 2016. A further generous gift from the Hilberts enabled the expansion of the Hilbert Museum, tripling the size of the museum. Another work by Miller Sheets this piece was painted in 1933. The year 1933 marked the end of Prohibition, so appropriately this one is called Beer for Prosperity. Another one by Miller Cheats. This one is titled California circa 1935. To Millard, the horse represented life and sensuality. Here he combines a sensual and perhaps feminine form of the hills with a mare and stallion in the foreground. This is the last painting I'm including by Sheets. This was called San Dimas Train Station and was painted in 1933, just a few months before the entire train station burned to the ground. This oil on masonite work was painted by John McLaughlin in 1948. These next two desert scenes were also oil on masonite. They were painted by Conrad Buff. Emigdio Vasquez was a resident of Orange. He graced the Orange County art scene for more than 50 years and helped to influence the local Chicano art movement. He produced more than 400 oil paintings and 32 murals before his death in 2014. This oil on canvas is titled Chavez Ravine Homeboys. The subject matter of this painting is pretty easy to identify. The painting's name is Frida and was painted oil on canvas in 2006. This one is titled Mike's Pool Hall, Oil on Canvas, 1996. This untitled self-portrait was painted by Susan Hartel. She says, quote, My ideal in painting is that moment when what's every day is seen as magical. The outstanding virtue of wood engraving, perhaps, is its strength. The contrast of its strong blacks and whites, combined with delicacy of line, gives it an infinite range of color and texture by Paul Landacre. As you travel around Orange County today, you might wonder, what did this county look like 20, 50, or even 100 years ago? This exhibition is the first in a series that attempts to use paintings, graphics, and ephemera to help give you an idea of what it was like, quote, back then. At one time, the land in Villa Park was almost completely covered with orange groves. The Villa Park Orchards Association picked, packed, and shipped most of the fruit grown here by Kern Erickson. In this painting by Rosemary Tuthill, the packers are filling crates of Rooster brand oranges. Some of rock music's truly innovative bands played in Orange County. For instance, a poster here announces a dance in Crawford Hall at UCI where Led Zeppelin provided music. Another flyer invites teenagers to listen to Alice Cooper play at the White Room 
Dance and Concert Club in Buena Park, and to see them again the next night with the Mothers of Invention at Cal State Fullerton. The Ramones played at UCI, and punk era groups Agent Orange and the Blasters at the Cuckoo's Nest in Costa Mesa. One of my favorite artists is Southern California native Bradford Solomon. Here he is eating dinner at the Crab Cooker in Newport Beach with a couple of his friends, Mark Hilbert and Gordon McClellan. Instantly identifiable, this painting brings back memories of a simpler time. Here Bradford is enjoying a Southern California icon, which is a frequent subject of many of his paintings. Some say In-N-Out French fries are an acquired taste, but these are definitely identifiable with the tray with the red swaying palm trees. Another one of my favorites, this one is appropriately called Animal Style. Another Bradford Solomon work, this one always puts a smile on my face. It's titled Dude Descending a Staircase, or maybe it should be The Dude. The Hilbert also has quite a few Norman Rockwells. This one from 1922 is entitled Vacation Time. I can really relate to this as his little dog encourages him to stop studying and come on down to the lake and go fishing. This work from 1961 is titled Lubelin Redesigning the Post. Herbert Lubelin was tasked with the job of redesigning the post to have a more modern feel. This Norman Rockwell from 1946 is entitled Crestwood Commuter Station. It's a fun deconstruction of a complicated artwork. Here is the same artwork as it appeared on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. Then there is a series of close-ups of the small stories that are going on within the larger work. This man running to his train, hope he isn't late. A man kissing his sweetheart goodbye. Grabbing the newspaper to read on the train. And finally, a couple also scurrying to catch the train. 